Hey guys, today we are going to relate enthalpy and chemical reactions and how we're going to use those two ideas together. So first things first, how do these two things actually relate? Well, hand warmers are a perfect example of chemical reactions and the transfer of heat. This reaction combines just enough iron powder and oxygen to create iron oxide and heat. So essentially, when you open that package of hand warmers, it's a little packet, it's a porous material, and it allows oxygen to get inside to the substance inside the little pack. That's when if you shake it or rub it together, it will actually get warmer faster because you are allowing the air to touch more particles of iron to create the reaction a little bit faster. So we have iron, which is Fe, and oxygen reacting on the left-hand side of the equation, and it's creating iron oxide in the, on the right plus some heat value. Instead of writing it with a plus sign here, we're actually going to see it written slightly differently in the future, and we're going to talk about that on, in this set of notes. So we're going to take a look at the heat of formation of each of these items. Essentially, how much energy it takes to make these items. The heat of formation of iron is zero kilojoules per mole. That means it doesn't take any energy to make it. It's already present, it's already here, and no energy is needed. The heat of formation of oxygen is also zero kilojoules per mole. Again, it does not take energy to make it. The heat of formation of iron oxide is actually negative 826 kilojoules per mole. What that means is that it releases 826 kilojoules of energy when it's being created. That's what that negative sign means. And since it means it releases, that means this is an exothermic reaction. So negative means exothermic. So here's our chemical formula. Four moles of iron, three moles of oxygen gas creates two moles of iron oxide. We are going to use this on the next slide. When we analyze this, we can ignore the heat of formation of iron since it's zero. We can ignore the heat of formation of oxygen since it is also zero. We cannot ignore the heat of formation of iron oxide since it has a value. So let's do some math. If the heat of formation of iron oxide, and if we look at this iron oxide chemical formula, notice that there is no number in front of it. So that means that this is the heat of formation of one mole of iron oxide is negative 826 kilojoules per mole. In this reaction, we actually have two moles of iron oxide. So what we're going to end up doing is a little bit of math. We're going to do a conversion factor. So our first number always goes over one, and our second fraction bar is actually going to be this section. We have the heat of formation of iron oxide as 826 kilojoules per mole. So since I have mole on the top of the first fraction bar, I need mole on the bottom of the second fraction bar. And essentially, kilojoules per mole means per one mole of iron oxide. And it's negative 826 kilojoules on the top. When we do that, the moles of iron oxide cancel, and we're left only with kilojoules on the top. So our heat of reaction, or our delta H of iron oxide, for this reaction is equal to negative 1,652 kilojoules. So this is where the delta H's come from. Chemists have been able to isolate and look at the different heat of formations of every object in a chemical reaction. And then they analyze those objects in order to find an overall delta H of that reaction. So for this reaction, I would actually have this written to the right as delta H equals negative 1,652 kilojoules based on two moles of iron oxide. Now, if this was balanced differently, our number would be a different number. If this was all multiplied by two, eight, six, and four, 
this would also get multiplied by 2 again. So it is based on the individual chemical formulas written next to it. So what does this mean? Each chemical reaction that we're looking at for the rest of this unit will have a delta H listed with it. If that H is positive, it means that it gains that much heat energy as the reaction takes place. That means it's going to end up being an endothermic reaction because it is absorbing energy from its surroundings. If the delta H is negative, it means that it loses that much energy as the reaction takes place. This means that that is an exothermic reaction and it would actually feel hot to the touch. So those delta H values are related to the enthalpy, the endothermic and the exothermic, based on if they are absorbing or releasing heat. On the next video, we will be determining the heat created or absorbed when a certain mass of a substance is being used in a chemical reaction. But don't worry, you will be given both the chemical equation and the heat or the delta H related to it. So it will be listed just like this in the problem, but they will give you an extra piece of information. If according to the following reaction, we burn 300 grams of iron, how much heat will be created? That's the type of problem that we're going to be looking at now. So on the next video, we're going to see a couple examples and work through those math problems together before you are actually required to do it in class. So I'll see you on the next video so we can get to work.